Welcome everybody to another Spike Studio product review. This time it's a two for one. We're going to show you how to install Windows Pro 8 onto VMware 5 on your Mac. All the steps you need and a couple little tricks at the end that you need to know to make it all work together. It's another Spike Studio product review. Make sure you check out the entire playlist on YouTube under YouTube slash Spike Studio. So you just got your hands on the new VMware Fusion 5 and then you went out and got the Windows Pro 8. Putting them together on the Mac was pretty simple if you just want to run Windows without the Metro interface. What we found is a few things on the Metro interface. So we'll start with the basics, then we'll get into how to configure the Windows Pro 8 stuff to show you how to make your keyboard and mouse work better with it and how it all fits together. So let's take a look at the video. So the first thing you'll notice as we sit here is you'll be inside and you can choose, install the operating system from the disk that you put in. No other real choice there. Uh, we'll continue on. It's an easy install if you choose it. It'll take your account name that you have on the system that's set up. Of course, a password is there, the account type. The Windows product key, well, it's gonna be included inside the box. It's pretty cool where they do a little tab inside of there. So we'll go ahead and enter that really quick. And I wasn't gonna show you. So you have two choices. You can actually be seamless or isolated with the environment that you install for Windows. The seamless environment uh, pretty much lets you work with files that you have inside your Macintosh and open them directly inside of Windows if Windows has that support. You can modify the documents, but the key is keeping everything updated. Isolated totally runs it in a separate VM with drag and drop only, meaning they won't click to open inside of Windows for Windows type files. I choose the seamless approach. I keep my Windows updated regularly. I load antivirus inside of it later. So I'm usually gonna choose that one when I go inside. Uh, we'll set this one as isolated. So you can look at the virtual machine itself. Uh, it'll assign two gig, the disk size maximum 60. You can customize these settings, which is a good part about this. You can assign more processors if you have it, more memory, more disk, everything you wanna do. You must save it first in order to uh, make the changes inside of it. I'm gonna leave it the way it is. So it's gonna have me save it as a Windows 8, no problem there. And I do this so I can go back and recopy these over and over. So the first time it's set, it'll actually start building in the background and get ready to load the disk. And we'll zoom out a little bit. So there's the install disk that came up and it's ready to install. Now, do want to note that I did in a few areas throughout the actual install process is speed it up a little bit, uh, but I'll notify you when those are. This is all normal time, what you're seeing right here. It'll bring up the original setup screens. Really doesn't look much different than the old days. It'll grab the files. Uh, it'll run through these in just a second. And I'll tell you where I actually sped it up a little bit just for the reason of you guys doing the install. That was in real time, now it's gonna grab these. This I did speed up. So this section for the files ready for installation, if you notice the green bar at the bottom as well, uh, this is probably about 200% faster, maybe 250% faster just for this section. As soon as this is done, I go back to real time. So that completed, we're gonna get back in now and this is gonna jump back to real time. So the features, uh, grabbing the necessary updates, and then finishing up was all in real time. I also, during this, took a little bit of advantage and during long restart times of the VM itself, I went ahead and sped those up by just editing it out instead of showing it. This is all real time, as you can see by the seconds counting down. So the Windows machine will restart each time it needs to. There's like two or three restarts it does as normal as we would expect from Windows. So this is a normal shutdown time here and a quick clip and we're back to the startup cycle. Now this little spinning globe we're gonna get at the bottom can go on from a few seconds to minutes. It just depends on what it's doing in the background, how long it needs. Now it's gonna actually assume the devices that are available to it on the machine through the VM. It ran through this in real time. So it scanned through looking for the network, the DVD, Bluetooth, things like that. Uh, this whole section, like I said, was real time. So those are ready and it'll jump on to the next step. So what we're doing at this point though is just building a vanilla install environment. And a key thing I like to remember later is I like to copy these off once I get it built vanilla before I add any software or any changes to it because I can always throw away a bad one and go back to the original. So this is a real-time reboot. And we're back to the start again. So now we're going to jump into the actual point of loading all the other pieces that go with the default installation. Not updates yet, but just the default installation itself. This is the new splash screen for Windows 8. And they really tell you absolutely nothing. 
So what you're going to see is a couple screens. Then tell them how to interact with the interface. Now, if you look at it, yeah, uh, after your PC is ready, you can do cool stuff. Uh, swipe from any edge. Well, yeah, if I had great touch stuff, but this is for a PC. Uh, with the mouse, you should be able to do a lot of this. And that's one of the things that we deal with in a few minutes was the integration with the mouse. So as you can see, I was trying to swipe and that was my whole desktop moving. Nothing was going on right now. Now I said, move your mouse to any corner. You see me banging the mouse around on the screen a little bit. Uh, it's, I'm getting nothing right now. I think what they were telling you is what you have to do, but I was trying to test it here thinking it would do anything, which it didn't do a darn thing for us. So the swiping in from the edges, uh, normally with the mouse or anything else and on the tablets themselves would allow you to bring open that menu. Keep that in mind for later. That's important as we start working with the environment and how you actually work. So now we're back to the desktop. It actually jumped over as it got done. It didn't give you a warning. This is the default desktop. The installer finished its last couple pieces because of integration with VMware tools. It does this automatically for you. You don't have to worry about anything with the VMware integration. Because of what we chose and didn't choose, VMware takes care of this step for you. What this will give you is integration with the toolbar that we look at in a minute when we need it. So all the thin print drivers, uh, looks for the network stuff, uh, looks for anything that has to do with video, audio, and it runs through and off it goes. The blinks are because of the video integration and yay for apps that can open web pages. We all know that. So once it gets rid of the backup files, We'll get ready for another restart, and in a minute, we're going to get back into the desktop and how to work with Metro as well as uh, where I was stuck. And that's probably a key part of this whole thing is how I was stuck trying to get it to work. So now we're in a restart mode. This is real time. It actually didn't take as long as I thought it was going to take, even inside the VMware environment. And for those that are choosing between Parallels and VMware Fusion 5, I personally choose VMware Fusion 5. You could run this in Parallels just as well. So we're back to the splash screen. Welcome. So it's going to have your login account that you set up originally. Uh, we skipped the password for now just so we could make this easy to show everything. And we're back to the desktop. Now, what I kept wondering is there's the pro build. Uh, it can see the network's connected. I have a touch keyboard built into the screen. Uh, but I was wondering, okay, where's all the Metro stuff? I can't get this Metro stuff to work. I can open file manager. Um, I can work with the local file system like Windows was before but I couldn't figure out for the life of me where the heck the Metro was. And I kept moving the mouse to the side. I looked for it in the menus. I was bringing up the keyboard and I was stuck. So we figured a couple things out is what happened. And this is where the tips come in. If you look here at the top under the toolbars, you'll see that I got it lit up. Now this is what I did. Um, the right side, you got the little slider that came out for us. I had to go up actually to the toolbar right there above where I am. And I'm going to highlight it for you here in just a second. There we go. I clicked tools. I went over to the keyboard and mouse. I went into the Windows 8 profile. I edited this profile. Now the default shortcut keys are there. You can change those as you want to. We want the general setting is what we need. And this is it under gaming. Always optimize mouse for games. It was on auto detect when we started. Auto detect was never working right. And what it was doing was having it unable to get the Metro to start. Now with this, I go over to the corner, out pops the menu. Hit start, now we're in Metro. So I had to go into the config and set it to actually use for the Metro settings. That's all I had to do. So now we're gonna get ready to take a look a little bit at the Metro settings here. So the first thing I did, I said, you know, let's choose something simple. Let's go ahead and look at the weather. Why it's easily configurable, it tests the networking and everything else. Let's use the location, I tried it. We get a massive failure on this, but that's no big deal. So it went out, you can see it across top, said couldn't find you, no big deal. Enter the location. So I'm at this point, I know that networking is working successfully. I could have brought up a web page too, but I wanted to play with the Metro interface. As most of you know, I'm located in St. Louis. Found it. I thought it was pretty slick and pretty cool. Uh, a lot of detail. I could see this being usable for those that are doing it, uh, but I couldn't get out of it. So then I was stuck in this loop that I couldn't get out of. I explored all the different menus. And it wasn't making sense to me what they want you to do from here. Uh, I could go back a screen to the configuration, as I showed a second ago, but I couldn't go back to the very, so I could play with more Metro and more interface. Um, then it finally occurred to me what I needed to do, and I think that's where the key thing was, is I said, oh yeah, there's a start menu now for Metro. It's over on the side. So I went back to the start menu for the side. 
got back to the Metro interface. Uh, as you can see now, it's updating live on the desktop, which is what the tiles are for. And you can resize these and make them bigger, make them smaller. Uh, I jumped over and said, what else would I work with? Video. Um, how would it interact with the network as well as locally? And I suppose you can share things. So it's Xbox video, which is interesting. You can see all the shows that are there. So I'm actually sharing what I can do with my Xbox login or my Microsoft Live login. Um, I do have one. And you'll see me constantly, the whole desktop moves is because of the way I swipe with the Macintosh mouse. Even though I'm inside of the VM every now and then I forget and I swipe incorrectly with multiple fingers or whatever with the mouse for the uh, Mac. And that's just a common thing. So I said, you know, let's try to open. Apparently you can sort and open uh, all sorts of things across the files. You can look at your network. You can look at local stuff that's on the OS considered for Windows uh, out to SkyDrive. You can go into your network. You can type one in there on the network and jump ahead there, which I really like. If you have a media file server, you can map on out to that and actually then stream data right to this inside of Windows if you had something that didn't play. Now keep in mind the settings change depending on where you are. These are the general settings as you see, notifications, network power. But when you're inside an actual tile, then the settings are for the tile. And we'll explore that in just a second as well. So games, this is interesting because they hooked to Xbox games is one of the key things they did. Um, not only do they do the Xbox videos, but the Xbox games. So anything you play appears there. After you log in, you'll see even the history of yourself. And we'll log in in just a second. So you'll get your MSN Live. These are, you know, fake friends because we're not logged in yet. That gives you an idea of where they'll be and they want you to sign in. So the whole integration point of the Windows 8 and the Metro is the second screen, working with the tiles. Now the updates popped up. So I jumped out to the updates. Every tile needed to update just about. So in a second is another speed up part. So I made sure they're all selected, which I saw the check, but I you know select all. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit update. So all these are tiles and applications that are built in. So these are things that are like a Windows update for the Metro screen. So all this is sped up, uh, probably double time is about all it was when I went through and did it. But I want to show you that it automatically updates. It automatically does the install. The tiles get updated automatically. Nothing else is needed on your part. And then it'll refresh. When this part is done, we go back and then we can work with the actual games and the other ones in the store itself uh, until you do this step it wouldn't let me do anything only because it's like uh, iOS, right? You see apps that need to be updated. The difference was you can still work in the live app before you update. The Metro wanted you to update everything first. So the last couple ones will run here and then we'll be able to jump back over. All right. So once those are done, I went back in. Now the store is live. As you can see, I was amazed at the number of apps that were there. Uh, as expected, you'd find some things like Skype and the others, but it was really cool to see they had a lot of apps that were ready to go uh, for the environment already for the tiles and for everything else. Um, I didn't buy any on this. I wanted to show you exactly how big and wide their catalog was already. Now you're saying, well, there's only four or five on each. Well, there's a button for each one for top free and new releases, which took you into a whole nother listing. So we'll go back to the start menu. We only got another minute of things we want to look at. I'm going to go back to games and I'll log into the Xbox Live for you real quick to show you exactly what happens. So we'll sign in and there I am. Uh, yes, I skipped that for you just so you know I cut it. So we'd have to go through passwords and stuff. So on Xbox Live, I'm I do notes as I am everywhere else in the world. You're able to edit your profile, which then automatically shows up the next time you log into Xbox, which is your gamer tag info, which I found interesting. I can work with that directly. Uh, it'll update your bio and location. You'll get to see your friends who are online, any pending messages you have. So this integrates tightly with that whole environment. I found that pretty cool, pretty slick and good to work with. Now the settings, as you see, now jump into my settings for games. Remember I said before, when I went to settings, it was for everything. Now I'll see them just for this games area in this tile. So go back out to start real quick. And I believe we'll take one last little look at something here on the setting. We also need to show you how to shut down when you're done, because it's a couple clicks to shut down. So you can zoom out the tiles because you can have so many. You can resize them big and small. Uh, you can log yourself out. Of course, you can change your account pictures. Uh, but uh, you see there's nowhere to shut down from here and it's a multi-click thing to actually shut down Metro from this screen in this tiled interface. I'm surprised there's no tile for it, which I guess you could click accidentally, but there's no way to easily do it. So what you're going to find here in just a second is you'll actually jump over, go right back over to where we were in the start menu. All right, so let's jump over. We're going to hit settings, then we're going to hit power 
And then we're gonna choose the power to shut down. So that's it. Here's a quick look at how to get it running inside of VMware Fusion 5. If you guys have more questions, let me know and look for other product reviews from Spike Studio on YouTube.